thank you. I'm with Yankees head athletic trainer Steve Donahue. Now, Steve, Ryan Bruco and Ken Singleton were in the booth last night, and they were campaigning for you to be named the player of the game after that ninth inning expertise in the dugout. Take it, th take us through it. Well, the umpire. I, at first, I didn't see him, and, and all of a sudden, some hey. The, tr the umpire's coming coming this way. You better go help him out. And I was like, I didn't know what was wrong with him. And he says, a bug just flew in my ear. So naturally, I'm expecting a small little gnat, you know, a little f mosquito or something. So I try him with a cotton tip applicator, and nothing's coming out. And finally, he's like, well, you have a tweezers? I'm like, okay, let's get. I get the tweezers out of the kit, and all of a sudden, I'm starting there a little bit. I'm like, look, you might want to try this yourself because I don't want to dig too deep. He, he, he tried it. He started feeling something. I helped him get it out, and it was like, I mean, I... I don't know if he was bats in the belfry, but that was a big moth. I'm going to tell you, this thing was flying. So, What was the reaction of the people around you in that dugout when they saw the size of that moth? I can't repeat the language. It was crazy. It was nuts. It was, it was, I, 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 he had to be feeling terrible because this thing was big and flapping, and I can't imagine what was going on inside his head. Although some of those umpires, I don't know what's going on inside their heads anyway. Have you ever seen anything like that before on a baseball field? Besides the midges with uh, Jabba a few years back in Cleveland, no, no, I haven't. Those two instances aside, what's the weirdest thing you've come across throughout your long career here with the Yankees? Oh, wow, that's that's a hard one. I, you know, I don't know. I don't. I, I'd have to. It'd be crazy to venture to guess for that. So. Now, not a lot of people know this, but you put in a tremendous amount of hours. What time do you actually get to the ballpark normally and kind of take us through your day? What does it entail? Well, we do um, uh, we get here around 12.30 for a 7 o'clock game. We usually have a 1 o'clock meeting with the staff, and I have a great two, uh, two great assistant athletic trainers, Mike Shuck and Tim Lentick, and then along with our conditioning uh, coach, Matt Krause, who's super, and, and his assistant, Andrew Weisberg, and then our our massage therapist, Doug Cecil, we have a really great staff. So we meet about 1 o'clock, go over all the players, all the injuries, where everybody's at, where they're at in their rehab. And then uh, from there, players start coming in. The rehab guys come in early. The DL players try to get them through it. And then we start working on the game guys to get ready for uh, to start the 7 o'clock game. So. Now, now, like these guys on the 25-man roster, you actually came from the minors as well. Sure. Take me back to that day when you got the call up. Do you remember? Uh, yeah, it was in the it was in the winter. I was uh, uh, working at Columbia University for the off season. Um, oh no, I was yeah, I was at Columbia and uh, got a call from the farm director saying that uh, Mark Laton, who was the assistant before me, went to San Francisco uh, Giants as the head trainer, and that I was going to the big leagues as Gene Monahan's assistant. So that was that was a special day for sure. I, I was that was crazy, but. You spent 26 years working under Gene Monahan. What was it like working for Gino? Oh, he, you know, Gino not only is he a mentor, he's he's my best friend. You know, we've uh, we were like family, and and so, or are still like family. We talk to him all the time. We text, we we talk, and uh, he's still a big part of of the Yankee lore and and a part of the Yankee family. And he'll be here next weekend for the uh, or next week for the 98 reunion. I look forward to seeing him as uh, as we do for all the big occasions when he comes in, and he comes to spring training with us, which. Which is super to have him have him with us all the time then and it's it feels like home when he's around so two questions before I let you go you've obviously been around for a long time have you noticed a big difference in the way that players take care of their bodies over the years there's no doubt that the players are so much more in tune with nutritionally and, and exercise wise what they're doing all the different therapies I mean guys come in knowing exactly what they want it used to be you know if, for example I Forty years ago, players would come in and want baby oil in spring training to go outside. Now it's like you have SPF 70 because they know. They know they've learned about skin cancer. They've learned about the, the effects of sun. Uh, they're looking at vitamins. They're looking at nutritional uh, values to the foods. They want more of, of the, the better food choices. They, they, they're not coming in with the, with the bags of fast food and french fries like they used to. It's, it's, definitely, uh, it's definitely a whole turn towards uh, healthier, stronger, better performance, better players. You know, it's a lot of hours, a lot of work, but do you love what you do? You gotta love this. You gotta love it. It's a passion. You have to have a passion for the game and for this profession to be an athletic trainer. Steve, thanks for the time. Thank you.